Hello, everybody, and good morning. I think it's still morning, yes. Uh, let's see. People are walking into the room, and uh, I have a poll up for you guys. I want to know how many modelers we have, so I know how deep I can go. Um, we have 60% of us here are not financial modelers, and 40% are. That's what I see. So we're about to start, guys, and thank you for joining us for the Financial Modeling Webinar Series. This is a webinar, monthly webinar series coming to you from D. Brown Consulting. Uh, we do an Excel webinar series, Power BI and Excel webinar series, Financial Modeling series, and a Talent Development series. So every third Thursday of the month, we do these um, webinars. And so you can share that with your friends and stuff and get them to register for our webinars every third Thursday of the month. I'll just add the link on our chat so you can see um, this is the link to register for all our webinars the excel webinars power bi as well as financial modeling and talent development so of course this starts at nine modeling starts at 11 o'clock to 12 excel and power bi from 9 to 10 and the other one for talent development from 2 to 3. Right, so today we're going to be, this is the June 2018 episode, and we're going to talk about five ways to incorporate scenario and sensitivity analysis into your model. This is a repeat of last month. We had um, we wanted to just get through and kind of combine a couple of other things in that, uh, the one we did last month. So here I'm going to talk about some stuff like Monte Carlo simulation and how you can use sensitivity analysis to do a Monte Carlo simulation. Then what exactly is a Monte Carlo simulation? You, I will explain that to you. We'll see a small model that we're going to use for the Monte Carlo. And then we'll do some scenario analysis to see, okay, if uh, production changes, what's, what's our profitability looking like? So we'll build a scenario model. And then we also do a sensitivity on top of that scenario model. So it all sounds very interesting and complex, but it's not really complex when we start doing the demo. So are we ready? Should we move on? Okay, I can see people are still coming into the room. So about us and about me, I'm David. So I'm the one taking you for this webinar. And David Brown, I've been working um, with Excel for like 20 years, 20 plus years, 22 years. And I build a lot of solutions for clients and do a lot of uh, report automation and just make sure people are more uh, efficient when it comes to working with Excel. And uh, also, of course, building models. On, uh, of course, modeling, Excel is the tool of choice for uh, any financial modeler. A company that's sponsoring it is D Brown Consulting. Uh, we do training, consulting, and payroll. And the training, we are more like analyst training. We're analyst trainers. So we, we have lots of courses, uh, online courses, classroom courses, blended courses, where we take all of this, um, um, take stuff on financial modeling, report automation with Power BI, report automation with Excel. Uh, we do data presentation, advanced presentation skills, where we teach you how to use, how to really create excellent PowerPoints uh, that will make sense when you're doing a live presentation. Lots of stuff like that. And consulting as well, we build models for you and we build reporting engines for you with Power BI. And payroll, we do payroll outsourcing. Companies outsource their payroll to us to confirm or guarantee confidentiality. We are also affiliated to Financial Modeling Institute. So I'll advise, since you guys are interested in financial modeling, I'll advise you go to fminstitute.com. I'll show you a little bit about them later, but it's important you go there and go and check them out. So fminstitute.com, I've put it on the chat. This is the financial modeling body, which is like uh, CFA, ICANN, ACCA. They give certifications in financial modeling. Level one is called Advanced Financial Modeler. Level two is called Chartered Financial Modeler. And level three is called Master Financial Modeler. And I can tell you that, I mean, I've been a modeler for almost 20 years. They are excellent. The syllabus is excellent. The exams are super, and the exams can be written in Nigeria now. So we wrote the last exams in April. The next exams are in October, and it's a four-hour exam. You have a computer, and you build a model from scratch. That's just a summary of the exam. So you come to the exam, sit down, and build a model from scratch. So after the exam, for sure, you're a modeler. So I asked how many modelers do we have in the house? We have 60, 40, or, 60, or 38, 63. So that's good. So what exactly is modeling? Let me just play you a short video I recorded on what exactly, who is a modeler. So. 
So who is a modeler? I'm a financial modeler and I've been building models for deals for quite a long time. Over these years, over these years working as D-Brown Consulting, we've basically built up a methodology, detailed methodology on how you build models. How, you, how do you consider yourself a modeler? For example, I mean, if someone wants to build a, a model for a telco or you want to build a model for an oil and gas firm, it doesn't matter what organization, what industry it is. As long as you understand the mechanics, as long as you understand how to sit down with the financial controller, for example, and understand the drivers of this deal, you will be able to build any model. So you're going to build models from scratch in our courses. You build models from scratch, from a blank spreadsheet, all the way to a detailed model with sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, all the ratios you can think of, DuPont ratios and the likes, detailed analysis that kind of helps management make decisions on whether or not to go in with this. Oops, I think I must have cut you guys out. That's an error. Uh, I'll play the video again. So who is a modeler? I'm a financial modeler and I've been building models for deals for quite a long time. Over these years, over these years working as D-Brown Consulting, we've basically built up a methodology, detailed methodology on how you build models. How, you, how do you consider yourself a modeler? For example, I mean, if someone wants to build a model for a telco or you want to build a model for an oil and gas firm, it doesn't matter what organization, what industry it is. As long as you understand the mechanics, as long as you understand how to sit down with the financial controller, for example, and understand the drivers of this deal, you will be able to build any model. So you're going to build models from scratch in our courses. You build models from scratch, from a blank spreadsheet, all the way to a detailed model with sensitivity analysis, scenario analysis, all the ratios you can think of, DuPont ratios and the likes, detailed analysis that kind of helps management make decisions on whether or not to go in with this deal or whether or not the firm needs to kind of change their strategy. All sorts of decisions are made with your model. And guess what? There's also a certification, an internationally recognized global certification now. Yes, you can get advanced financial modeling certificate and you do the course you do the you do the course you get ready for the certificate you do the international certification and you have your certificate which is recognized worldwide so come on over you could send us an email at training at dbrownconsulting.net or you could go to our website dbrownconsulting.net or just call us on 0700 training that's plus 234 700 training or in nigeria 0700 training so we're looking forward to seeing you See you in the next class. Great, guys. We're back. So we are going to start straight away. We're going to jump straight into our demo. And um, so we just let's get the tools up. And I'm going to jump into the demo right now. OK. I'm sharing my screen with you to show you the tool we're going to use for the demo. Right. Some of you would see this as a bit familiar, especially those that joined us at the CFA uh, Financial Modeling Live um, breakfast we did and talked about financial modeling on the Financial Modeling Institute. So here we have a model and we're going to use this model to go, we'll go through the whole process of building detailed scenario and sensitivity analysis for this model and hopefully you will be able to gain an understanding of how everything works. So here we have a model, we have Ia Luku is a fufu galore, she does fufu, I don't know here who eats fufu here, anybody who is a fufu lover? I personally don't like it at all. I think it really smells. I prefer pounded yam or amala or something like that. Do you get fufu? No way. Yeah. So, um, well, nobody here likes fufu, right? I can't see anybody chatting. Okay. <laughs> so here she produces fufu. And if you look at it, she, she the key thing here about any, any production of anything is demand. We don't know what demand is. So demand is always a tough thing in a, in a model to understand demand. So here she's wondering, what can I produce? She's thinking, okay, if I produce 210 um, plates, so she sells by the plate, 210 plates of fufu, and my price is 600, uh, my price proportion is 600 naira. Let me make that uh, a naira, right? So my price proportion is 600 naira. And then my cost per portion is 300 naira, my price per scrap. So what she does is every time everyone finishes the plate, right, she will, there's some scrap. So the scrap, she sells it as dog food. So she sells the scrap as dog food at 10 naira, and she has a fixed cost of 15,000 naira. So regardless of whether she sells anything, there's going to be a fixed cost of 15,000 naira. Now, 
somebody will calculate profit or, or, or say revenue. Revenue should be equal to uh, uh, maybe your production times times what? Times your price. That's typical, right? Revenue. But we'll see that that's not correct, but we'll, we'll go on with this anyway. So revenue, then variable cost is, she has a variable cost per portion of 300. So variable cost being 300 times production, right? Again, this is not completely accurate. Then you have fixed cost, which we said is 15,000. And then we have the dog revenue is going to be equal to this 10 times the number of plates that she has for dog food, which are the scraps, 210, right? Again, this is not completely accurate. But the profit will is supposed to be, right, the revenue, right, minus the variable cost, minus the fixed cost. And this is revenue plus the dog food revenue, right? So that, that's revenue. So we get a profit of, of that, right? So now everything here, obviously, it's in Naira. So I put the currency sign for us. There we go. If you're interested in knowing how you get the Naira currency sign, go visit our YouTube channel, D Brown Consulting on YouTube, and you'll see how to change the default currency on your system to your local currency instead of the dollar. You will check that out. So now why I'm saying this is not feasible, because this 50,000 is really almost fake. You, you can't say you're going to produce 210 and then 210 people show up and buy your product. Unless your product is a special product that always sells out, then yeah, you could say that. But most times our products don't always sell out. So we, we really need to be more realistic. So we need to know what demand is. And this is one of the issues with modeling, right? You don't know what demand is. You can't just predict demand. So we could, if we say demand is 140, what does that mean? Let's say demand is 140 here, 140. Well, what that means is we produce 210, but we only sold 140, right? So the cost of production is still, cost of production is still on 210, isn't it? But we've only sold um, 140. So we need to modify this formula. It's not uh, F8 times, because we're not sure. We're only going to produce the minimum of this F8 and the minimum of that and the demand. So it's either going to be the lower of demand or production because if you had a demand of 140 and only 100 people only 100 plates were produced well you have demand of 140 but you over produced i mean you under produced so see that's the risk it's called the news vendor problem if you if you go online the news vendor problem because you're going to produce this uh, news vendor problem is like a newspaper how many uh, copies of the newspaper does the vendor produce how many copies well you won't really know how many copies he, he needs to produce because he will produce and he's hoping that he will sell everything out. But if he produces too little, people will not get the paper and they'll be pretty pissed. If he produces too much, well, he loses money. So that's a classic problem. How do we solve it? We're going to reduce this risk by doing something called Monte Carlo simulation. How many of us have heard about that? So if you notice, the problem is I don't know what demand, I don't know what demand will be. So the best way to, to kind of check that is to go to historical data. So here I have some historical data here, right? So I just kind of put some fictitious data here, right? Uh, fictitious data on number of customers and then another set of assumptions about number of customers. I put some formula there to do some random stuff. So let's say we're going to use, um, well, we're going to use which one should we use we have a random number generator here so let me fix let me fix this so i stop it being random so i just copy paste special values right so let's say i'll use this assumptions this set of assumptions assumption two right so if this is my demand you can see that there was a demand on the first of january for 262 plates then another day was 140 plates another day was 175 what you do is you, you're going to use a, we're going to use a normal distribution curve to try and do a, an estimate of what is the standard deviation of this and what's the mean. So we have to calculate the mean. So I'm going to calculate the mean, which is the average. What was the average demand? What was the average demand for all these things here? Let me just highlight and enter. So my average demand is 189.64 something, something, something. Yeah, so let's just uh, make that round. Let's round it. I'm just going to round. I also see a rounded figure. 
So I'm rounding this average demand. So my average demand was 190. What's my standard deviation? So this now this lady, it's the, the total, you have to think about it. This data, is this all the demand she has ever had since she started production? Let's just assume it is, right? Let's assume that she started production on the 1st of January, 2016. That's the very first day she started production, which means all of these figures, everything here is actual demand, is, is actual demand, full, all, the whole population of data she can have. That's what that is. So if that's the whole demand, all the demand she's ever had, so we can kind of say that the standard deviation is not a sample we're looking at, it's a population. So that the formula is, S, the function is stdev.p. So that is the standard deviation of the entire population of data. So I do that and then I come and highlight the, the, uh, the data, standard deviation of this data from the beginning to the end. So one of the ways to mitigate risk, right, is you need to do a standard deviation so you understand okay, what is the, how, what's the deviation? How is this data distributed? Here I'm rounding it up. I just want to round it up to zero decimal, so it's just clean. So we're saying the standard deviation is 39. The mean is 190 plates. So on average, she kind of um, um, sells, uh, or there's a demand for 190 plates on average. But we have a standard deviation of 39. Now, with these two figures, we can now calculate a demand. We can do a more accurate demand. If I delete this, a more accurate demand. Now, if I deleted that, my revenue is supposed to be almost zero, isn't it? So the minimum of um, F8 and 1.8, let's see if we got that right. So the minimum of this times F9, this should have given me zero, shouldn't it? Let's say F9 of this. 210, hmm, if I type zero, so minimum, you have to have a figure in there, you see that? Minimum doesn't work with blank, you better have a figure in there. If it's zero, then it's zero, yeah. So revenue was zero, and we have a loss. So here we're gonna use a normal uh, normal inverse, um, what, what we call like a normal inverse curve, normal inverse curve, and the normal inverse curve, you use a function called norm.inv. Norm norm.inv, assumes that your, your demand is normally distributed. Yeah, it's just a statistic term. I'm sure you've seen the bell shape. Most things are kind of close to normally distributed, right? So that bell shape, and then we are saying that the probability, we need to have a probability. What's the probability and what's the mean and what's the standard deviation? For probability, you use the RAND function. So you just use the RAND function for, for probability. And of course, our mean is this cell here. And our standard deviation is this cell here. Then what this will do is to go through and calculate a, a guesstimate of demand. So this is a guesstimate, right? Demand is guessed at a 2 to 8. If I press F9, 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 you see that this recalculates. So this constantly recalculates. I'm just pressing F9 for it to recalculate. Now, at any particular run, so at this my run, Demand is 229. So if demand is 229, we could say, oh, she may say, you know what? I'm going to produce 220. Yeah. Once she produces that, guess what? Demand has changed to 227. If I if I keep on typing anything, it just changes. This is just simulating real life. So you can imagine if she produced 220, demand was 228. That means she can only sell 220, isn't it? So now you can see it's recalculating every time. And that's because I have another table open. Let me just close that. I have a table open where there is um, a sensitivity analysis there. So I'm just gonna close that table so that we don't have two sensitivity tables confusing us. All right, so let me just close that. Okay, so, right. So now this is fine, but for us to kind of reduce our risk, we need to kind of do a detailed Monte Carlo simulation. And that's what we have here. So let me show you how this was calculated, this Monte Carlo, right? How did we build this Monte Carlo? For us to build it, we need to do it like a thousand simulations. So you see, every simulation, this keeps changing. Every simulation, this changes, right? At one simulation, this has changed. Another simulation, it has changed. Another simulation, it changes. So let's do 1,000 of these simulations. And what we'll do is we want to see what the demand and the profit is for various simulations. We're going to do a thousand. So to do that, I'm going to type one here. And then I want to type one, two, three, four, five, up to 1,000. 
the fastest way to do that is you click, you type one, you go to the home tab, then you go to the right, you see a fill. If you go to fill and click, you see fill down, fill right, fill up, fill down. You go to series, go to fill series. And then you say, I want to fill a column. I want to fill a series uh, that changes by one, but it goes all the way to 1,000. Now you could do a simulation for 10,000, 100,000 simulation. I'm just gonna do 1,000 simulations right now. So I say, okay. So this fills one to 1,000. So you can see that. Can you see that? I just filled it out, one to 1,000, very quick. So you want to do one to 10, you just say one. You come here, you go to home, and then you go to fill, and then you go to series, and then you say, look, I want to fill every two, 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 two. give me up to what? 20 or something. Say okay. Oh, fills it to the right because what happened? I came to fill series. I didn't change this to column, so it filled it by row, right? So I say give me every three steps and give me up to 30 or something like that. And say fill okay and it fills down. So that's a nice trick. So now that I have this, I need to now understand demand. I want to calculate various, various demands for various run, for the first simulation run, second simulation run, third simulation run. And this is where a sensitivity comes in. It's almost, we're gonna use a, a simulation. To build a simulation, we're going to use the same tool we use for sensitivity analysis, which is called the data table tool. So it's a data table tool, which we use for sensitivity. And the trick is you just type one, two, three, two, whatever. Then you come to the top here and link this top to what it is you're trying to get. I want to, I want to get the demand, right? And then here, I want to get the profit. This is just how you set up the table. Then you highlight like this all the way down to the end. And then once you highlight to the end, you now come to data, what if analysis, and then you say data table. So once you select data table, that's a very funny trick because the data table says, okay, where are your inputs? This data is like, where's the inputs? Where's the input? We really don't have any input. All we wanted to do is run 1,000 times. So the trick is you come to column, for example, since it's in column, and just pick any blank cell. Once you pick any blank cell and OK, it's going to fill it out with answers. So this is basically a different runs of the simulation. It's running the simulation, running the simulation, running the simulation. And for this run of the simulation at um, 216.79, blah, 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 demand, you get profit of this. Of course, this is running with uh, decimals, but we can forgive that the error margin won't be much. So let me just format that. And then this one is the demand. So if you have 216, you will get uh, five, to 1,279, so let's test that. If I come here, just type 216. Just remember this, I'm breaking this up, 51279 is what we should expect there, something close anyway. So 50800, so that's cool. So undo, so that we still have our normal formula in there. So this is how you do it. So this simulation is all the profit. So what is the average profit? What's the expected profit we're gonna get for this uh, this production of this place was so expected profitability so for that i'm going to go into this report summary so i have a set of summaries that we need here right set of things we need so what's our expected profit if you look to the bottom here i have expected profit what will it be well it's going to be the average of all these profit items here so let's just say the average the average of all these guys down here. So all our profit from this very profit here all the way down and we enter. So this is our expected profitability. Now, if this is your target profit, we're going to do something later to say how many of it is above target. So we can even try that here. So profitability, profitability of uh, probability, sorry, of loss. What's the probability of us making a loss? So if you think of it, if I come here and I produce only maybe 50 plates up here, I still make a profit. So I produce 20 plates. But if I produce only 20 plates, I can't even cover my fixed cost. So I'm making a loss, but I'm not gonna produce 20. So let's just put, I put a fixed figure to, to 10. So question is, what's the probability of us making a loss? Another way you could make a loss is if we increase our cost per portion. Let's say increase our cost per portion to 500. Yeah, and if we increase our post, post proportion 500, we're still making a very small profit, probability of profit depending on demand. But if demand changes, you can see we're making a loss. So 
Now let me leave this cost at this. So expected profitability is a loss. So expected, we're expected to make a loss. So really, uh, not really good. Let's make this 400. What I'm doing here, guys, is what I'm doing here is scenario analysis, okay? What I'm doing is I'm keep on changing. I'm saying, what if, what if, what if? When you see yourself saying, what if, in a model, you are doing scenario analysis. I'm saying, what if it's 400? What if is this? What if is that? So we're going to create a table of scenarios very soon and say, okay, in different scenario sets, instead of doing these what ifs, let's just create a table. So these are our inputs. I'm going to copy this. And let's have a set of scenarios, okay? So we're going to have a set of scenarios. So let's put that here, for example. Let's just say scenario table and paste this. Pay special values. So let's call this base case because typically when you have scenarios, we, we have what we call the base case, worst case, and like it. So this is base case. These are the assumptions of base case. Let me make them input. So what about a set of assumptions? Let's copy this and let's have another set of assumptions or let's like five assumptions. Let's call this one uh, our worst case or likely, let's say likely case. Uh, for likely, maybe our production will be 180 and um, our price per portion. Let me, let me just make this uh, left aligned. So price per portion. Or, or right hand price proportion. Let's say likely is going to be 550, and uh, let's leave it at 400. Uh, scrap price or scrap, maybe they only give us eight. Uh, fixed cost is going to be 16,000. So, this is our likely case. What about our worst case? Worst case is probably uh, we only produ produce only maybe 160, right? And uh, this we can only charge 500, and then this is 40. Let's uh, go to the worst list. We are working, for example, like copy this, right? Copy the special values. So, uh, worst case, the expected profit. See the profit down here? This the, this, don't look here. This is just for one run, okay? This is just for one run. The way you should be looking is expected profit down here. Very terrible expected profit of 265.57. What about if it's a likely case? If I copy this and paste it here. Expected profit goes up. So that's something I'm copying and pasting. That's not good practice. So we're going to automate that. Let's do this. Let's put it in case. Uh, ridiculously optimistic. So if we're ridiculously optimistic, let me just um, make a few so yes, clearer and I wrap this so you can see. So we have a ridiculously optimistic case. And so a ridiculously optimistic case says, uh, let's say we have a 200 and 250, we produce 250, we could charge 750 for some reason, and this one down to 50, and our fixed cost, let's, let's just leave the fixed cost the same. So let's delete this one. So these are our cases. Now, how do we run these cases? How do we, let me, let me just bring this down here again. How do we run these cases, the model? How do we do that? How do we run these cases? So typically, you want something, maybe a drop down here that you can choose which case you have, and then that way we can now see what our expected profit should be, right? Let's do, we need to run the scenarios. We need something to help us run the scenarios. So let's do that. Let me just shade that, let's make it look nice. That's good. So here we're going to create some scenarios. I want to create a drop down to run different scenarios. We have these are our scenarios. So let's Number. To do scenarios, you need two things. You need two things to run scenarios. One is you need a list and you need a switch. Okay? So the two things you need to run scenarios. You need a list and a switch. So this is our list of scenarios and we need a cell that's our switch cell. Okay? So this switch this is going to act as our switch cell. 
And why do I need a switch? What I need to do is switch from one scenario to the other. So I want to switch from base to likely to worse than everything and see how that affects our expected probability. So one, for example, what I mean is base case, right? If I see it's worst case. So for the list, we're using this as a list. So I need to create like a drop down of all my scenarios. I'm going to use something called a combo box. And to get a combo box, I need to go to the developer tab. To the developer tab, under insert, something called the combo box. Second, it's called the combo box. I click it, and I just drag it like this. It creates a box. Yeah? So this box, I'm going to fill it out with the scenarios here. So I right-click this box, and I say format control. And then after saying format control, under my input uh, ranges, I'm going to highlight this like this. These are my input ranges. Then the cell link, this cell link is your switch, right? So now if I say, okay, let's see if this works. If I come to the drop down, I click out first and come to the drop down, I only see base. You see, it's not working. Now, the reason you only see base is because unfortunately, you can't have a list this way. You need to have it this way. So this list has to be transposed. So it's a good idea to have like a control sheet, right? So you kind of highlight this like this, you copy it. Okay, so here I was talking about scenarios. So we created a list and we created a switch. So this is a list and a switch. And what we need to, we named this list L scenarios and then we named this switch S scenarios. So based on that, we go to developer and we select insert, insert, combo box so i'm now going to create the combo box see so this is my scenario box now this we haven't plugged this into the model yet the key thing is you build this list and a switch first you bring this combo box then you make this connection work first before you plug it in so now with this this combo box i right click it and i go to format control now the input range, this input range is actually your list. This cell link is your switch. So input range, you just type. If you can remember, you have to remember the spelling. I think it was L under. So it's a good thing to have a naming convention. So if I click out and click this drop down, you see that the list is working. I click on likely, it says two. I click on worst case, it says. So this becomes, this is our switch, right? Now we take this combo box, we copy it. I'm copying this combo box and I take it into my model. So I come to my model and I paste it here, yeah? So now this box for my reporting summary, I'm doing reporting summary based on worst case, see? But nothing is going to happen really. This is still running through the randomness, but I now need to plug this into my model. And the way to do that is all of these inputs need to feed from here. So when I choose likely, can you see likely? Or let me choose another one. If I choose base case, right? If I choose base case, my base case, if you look at my model up here, production is not base case, it's supposed to be 210. Price per portion is 550, it's supposed to be 600. So I'm going to change all of this. These are not going to be inputs anymore. So I'm just going to filter and going to you kind know, of remove all these inputs style. I'm just going to filter and use this style. So I have to try formulas in here so that I can pick from this. And to do that, good practice will be, of course, I'm going to pick from this table. So how we do that is I do an equals to and I do the index function. So I'm going to use the index. Now, the index function is one of the most powerful functions in Excel as far as I'm concerned. So index function, I say, okay, hey, and I say index, please, I would like you to have a look at this table, right? See this table I have here, this, this table, right? So this big table, I want you to just monitor this table for me. I'm going to press F4. And then I would like you to go to a particular row and a particular column that gives me exactly what I want. Now, the row I wanted to go to is the row corresponding to one of these items. So here, for example, in this cell, it's called production. So I'm saying, hey, go to the row that is equivalent to production. So that will be row one, two. For me to make that work, I need to use a function called match. Because I need to say, okay, what row is production in this table? Production is in row two. Prices are in row three. You no, know, this is row one, the heading. This is row two, row three. So my prices are in row three. My cost per portion is all in row four. 
my uh, scrap is in row five, and then my likely case is in column what? See if this is the table, see your table here. This is your table. This is the first column, this base is column two, likely is column three, but right now I want my rows. So I'm gonna use a match function. And by the way, if you like to learn a little bit more about index, you go to our YouTube channel, dbrownconsulting.net, and you'll see uh, how to use the match function very well. So or how to use the index function very well. YouTube, D Brown Consulting. So I type match, open and close bracket. I enter my formula bar, select match. Now this lookup value is there. So my lookup value is, you can't see it now, but it's this cell. Then my lookup array is it needs to go and look for where production is in this list, right? Which I need to lock. Then my match type is always gonna be zero. It's a permanent match type. Then I go back to index. And then my column is I'm looking for what scenario am I picking? What scenario? And the scenario I'm picking is base, base, case, base case. And if you remember, when I select base case, it will basically type the name of the scenario. It's going to type a number. If you come to control, you see it's typing one. If I selected likely, it's going to type two. So this is really the number I want, but just with a twist. Because if base case is one, if I come to my table, if you remember my table, where's my table? This table started from here like this. Base case is not the first column. Base case is the second column. Likely is the third column. So I just need to do a small modification. This cell that has my switch, I'll need to add one to it. Just adding one to it will make it correctly the second column. So if I click OK, it brings out exactly to 10. If I change this to likely, guess what? It brings 180. If I change this to worst case, it brings what? 160. So it's working fine. The only thing now is for me to drag this down so it copies for everybody all the way down here. So this is now me created a scenario analysis. So you see, base case brings it out. Likely brings it out. Worst case brings it out. Ridiculous optimistic case yeah, you see, a ridiculous optimistic case, we're making 43,000 as our profits for that day. Worst case, we are making 395 Naira, very tiny. That's the expected profit. You remember, if I remind you, the Monte Carlo simulation has simulated 1,000 runs of demand. Different, different demand assumptions 1,000 times. And then you see we're making some losses sometimes, profits sometimes, losses sometimes. By the end of the day, the average, which is the expected profit, that's what we have here. And that's what your model should show. So let's even see how much profit, what's the probability of a loss? Let's calculate that. To calculate the probability of a loss from this, our model, the probability of a loss would be how many, we're going to count if, you know, we're going to count if this range down here is a negative. So we're going to count any time all this profit all the way down. How many times is that profit, right? So look up that profit, comma, is it less than zero, right? So is it less than zero? But I can't just type that there. If I enter, it's not going to work, right? Because this less than, you have to put the whole thing. You have to kind of put it in double quotes. So it's like putting it in double quotes, less than zero. So less than, since I'm typing zero, I can put everything in double quotes, less than zero in double quotes, enter. So once you put it less than zero, then obviously you divide how many times are less than zero divided by 1,000. You know, we did 1,000 simulations. So it's 18.9% likely that we're gonna make a loss. What about if we're base case? It's 21% likely that we're gonna make a loss. Likely case, 19% likely we're going to make a loss. Ridiculously optimistic case, just 8.3% likely that we'll make a loss, right? In all this, all the simulation runs, the runs of the various simulations, right? So um, this is our probability of a loss. What about the probability of not meeting our target? Well, the probability is the same thing. Count if, uh, counting if, right? Anything in this, this range that is less than our target. So highlight this range, anything in this range, this 1,000 runs, how many of you are, then we'll put a double quote, less than, and then put a double quote, and then you put an and sign. This is how you do it. You say double quote, less than, double quote, and sign, and then link it to the target. So see, count if 
all our runs? Are you less than our target? And we close your bracket and we enter. Let's see. So 227 of them is less than target. We divide that by 1,000. So the probability that we are less than target, if I make the percentage sign, is 21%. So 21% probability that we're less than target. So the, what's the probability that we exceed target? It's simply equal to 1 minus this, isn't it? If the probability that are less than target, minus, it has to be, they have to add up to 100%. So the probability that we're really going to be above target is 78%, which is nice. That's very nice. But um, what about if it was the base case? Oh, so if we run a base case scenario, these are the scenarios we run. If we run this, our, our, our shop by base case scenario, the probability that we're going to make a profit is 41%. And our likely expected uh, profit is 11,000. Yeah. So that, that's how scenario analysis works. It's, it's pretty powerful. But there's something even more powerful that we're going to do next, which is we're going to do a sensitivity of this scenario. And that way, we're going to see all the answers. You notice that before I can get an answer for base case, I have to change this to base case. Then I'll see the answer. Click. Change it to likely. I'll see the answer. Click. So I want to be able to see all the answers at once. But before we do that, let me get back to the chat. Let's see. how. What do you think about this, guys? What do you think about what we've just done? We've built a model. We've used Monte Carlo simulation. We've done some scenario analysis. We use normal distribution. And... You can see that the model is such a tiny model here, but this is now a very realistic model because we are using, we've done 1,000 runs of possible demand. So let's have a chat for a few couple of minutes and then we come back and do the sensitivity analysis. Right, so I'm going to jump into the chat to answer anybody's questions. What questions do you have? Or anybody wants to talk, I can just request to talk and then, or type that you want to talk, or ask a question and then I'll put up your mic. All right, so let me hear from you before I continue. So while I'm waiting for anyone to chat, anyone interested in chatting, I just want to remind you about financial modeling. There is this Advanced Financial Modeler Certification course coming up from um, FMI. So Advanced Financial Modeler Certificate course. So that is coming up and that's the Financial Modeling Institute. So you see that on your screen. So the WALS Financial Modeling Certification Program. So the next exams, and you know Nigeria, we can do it in Nigeria now. So the exam location in Nigeria, there's one in Lagos, and the exams are going to be in October. So if I come here, if you just go, this is fminstitutes.com. If I go to the exam location and fees, that's coming up. The next exams are October 20th. And Let's see Nigeria. How much are they for Nigeria? Uh, here we go. We have EMEA, which uh, should be Africa. So see Nigeria. So currently the fees for the exam is 85,000, but that fee is ending on June 30th. So 85,000 naira for the exam, that's level one. So you pay this to the Financial Modeling Institute. It goes all the way to 170,000 naira is the normal price for the exams. So if you pay before 30th of June, which is what, in a week and so, you can pay 85,000 for the exams and do the exams in Nigeria. Or else you to go up to 100,000, that goes up to 129, 170. But we have a good promo for you guys, whoever is interested in modeling. We will pay for the exam for you. If you register within before the 30th, we will pay for the exams for you. If you do, if you do register, if you check out the offer I have that's on your screen, is the Advanced Financial Modeler Certificate course. It's a very, very, very detailed course. And this is one of the courses we have. It's an Advanced Financial Modeler course. It's worth $2,000. So we'll give you that course at 400,000 Naira. You pay for five days. You do a five-day classroom. You have access to one very rigorous online course, extremely rigorous online course, which you click on this to view course. For example, you see the rigorous online course. So this is the online course you will go through, and then you still come for a five-day classroom. You come for a mock exam, and then we pay for your certificate exam as well. So if you're interested in this, let us know. Now, anyone wants to chat about what I've done so far before I, uh, so I can continue? 
So here I'm going to do sensitivity. And what I want to do is I just want all these answers. I want all these answers for all my scenarios all at once, okay? So these are the answers that I got. Expected profit, a probability of a loss, a probability of not meeting the target. Oh, there's 100 percent probability of not meeting the target for likely. Is that possible? Wow. Oh, so so that means you will not. If you are likely, because you're never going to meet this target. This target is too high. Let's reduce our target to fifteen thousand. Yeah. Still no possibility. Wow. You need to do a base case to be able to meet your target. So our likely case is very, very stringent. And it seems, you see, so it's a very risky business. That's what this is telling us, right? So how do we do this scenario? So let me minimize this Monte Carlo simulation. I'm minimizing it. So let's get to scenario analysis. So I've opened up scenario analysis. I just preset a set of rules here. So let's see, what are we building? What we want is a bit different from what I have here. This is another way to do scenarios, right? So you can basically say, are these particular prices? Yeah, see, are these prices, what um, what is going to be our scenarios? Uh, what, with these prices and these costs, what is going to be our profits? But I want to do a different, a slightly different kind of scenario. So I'm not going to do this one. What I'll do, if I just insert some rows here so we can see. Just going to insert some rows. So the, my own scenario is I need some outputs. I need all these outputs, right? So I'm going to copy this. I need these outputs. But the way I need this output is I need them to show for all the scenarios at once. So I need all of this, right? I don't need targets. Let me remove targets. I need this. I need profitability. But I want this to show for every single scenario. So I want it to show for, let's say, base case. Let me type all the scenarios here, base case, likely, and worst case. I need it to show here. So let me paste this. I want the answers for base case. Give me the answers for base case, the answers for likely, the answers for worst case, the answers for ridiculous. Right? Give me those answers. And for that to happen, I will need to do some things. There's some rules for doing that automatically because I want all these answers to appear for every case down here. And to do that, we're going to build a small, this is a sensitivity analysis, a sensitivity table. We need to do a few housekeeping things. First of all, you will need to first remove, let me bring this down a bit, because you know that the model, the way that the model identifies base case is not by saying base case. It identifies it by this drop down. You know, when I say likely, that's how the model identifies likely. But really, this is not Excel. This drop down is not Excel. Now, the only thing that's Excel is this. If it's not in a cell in Excel, it is not Excel. So since this thing is not in a cell in Excel, it isn't really Excel. Even though it's working, that means it must be working with a cell. Now, if you remember, where is that cell that controls this? It is in the control sheet. That is this cell. So this is the cell that controls this dropdown. If I say worst case, it controls it. Remember, this dropdown is the same as this dropdown. They work with each other. So for this thing we're going to do to work, one of the rules is this. The input must be in the same sheet where you're building your sensitivity. The input has to be in the same sheet. So I have to come here, click on this input, and cut it. I have to control X. And then I have to bring that input to this same sheet. So you go and hide it somewhere. Let's just, let me just put it here. Just, just for, let's put it there. I'm just hiding it, right? So that's my input. It's in the same sheet, right? So this input being in the same sheet, we now looking at this, that means this base case, what scenario is base case? Scenario of base case is actually one. This is two, this is three, and this is four, isn't it? That's what it is. Because three is worst case. So if I come here and change this, this is worst case, so this is three. If I change this to base case, you see this changes to one, that's one. So this is what the system knows, how to identify base case, likely worst case. That's how a system identifies it. So you have to type that here. Then the next thing you need to do is for the outputs, you need to now link all these outputs to the actual cell containing the output. So I'm linking these outputs to the actual cell containing the outputs. And I can just come drop this down, Control D. This is the outputs. Let me just uh, make this a Naira sign as well. 
right so once you've linked it so this is your inputs and then this is your outputs now you won't show your user this this is just so that the thing works then you now highlight like this once you highlight like this, you know that this row contains the inputs and these are the outputs. You need to populate the outputs in here. Now these things I've typed here are just so that it works, so that this analysis works. So I'm going to hide that. So after highlighting, you go to formula tab or data tab. Under the data tab, you go to what if analysis to the right under forecast. Now you select what if analysis and then you say data table. Once you say data table, it's a very tiny but extremely powerful box. So this box says, hey, what is the input? Wait, which row, the row, these row entries, where is the input for these row entries? And do you have any inputs in your column entries? That's what it's asking. Now, if you look at our table, this column doesn't contain inputs, it contains outputs. It is the row that contains inputs. So you just tell it, hey, yeah, this row that contains inputs, this is where the input is. That's all it wants. This is where the input is. You know, we just type one, two, three. When you click OK, it's going to now populate this. So now because this is a sensitivity, F9, F9, because this is a sensitivity analysis and you have various scenarios running here. So if I click on likely, because it's running different scenarios at the same time, if you just say ridiculously optimistic, it will show you the same thing because it's how I call it, it has another sensitivity. If you look at this Monte Carlo simulation, this Monte Carlo simulation used the sensitivity table. So it's already running a Monte Carlo simulation sensitivity. So it's not going to be able to run various scenarios at the same time. So that's just one flaw of this. You, you have to get one answer at a time based on this. But really, when you're doing a scenario analysis, you and you want to put a sensitivity on it, you can't really put it on another top of another sensitivity. It just kind of confuses the system a bit. It just jogs the system's memory. So for this to work, you have to kind of switch off this sensitivity. You probably have to not have two sensitivities running at the same time. But this is how you do it. Then you would have different answers. If you're not already running one sensitivity, on the back end. So I'm just changing the formats for this. And then this one as well, all DT, all right? And that's one scenario, right? Now, if you want to do another uh, simpler scenario, which is let's say this one here. So this one here, we could say, okay, we're gonna say what is the price and what's the cost? If our cost is this, and this is our uh, inputs, what's the price? So that would be, this is our price and this is our cost. What will be our profit? Now, for that to happen, we're not going to use, we're not going to use this uh, um, uh, Monte Carlo simulation. We're not going to, we're not going to pretend it's not there. And we'll just use fixed figures for our demand, okay? We we'll just use a fixed figure for our demand of 180. It's just fixed. So we're not using normal distribution anymore. We're just using a fixed figure. And then all of these figures, I'm going to turn them back to inputs, okay? So I'm going to turn all of this back to inputs, copy, paste special values. So once I turn them back to inputs, this is a typical model that most of us know. Just inputs, this is demand, which is also an input. So let's say a demand of only uh, 210, right? This is all the calculations that go on. Now we want to do a sensitivity where we're changing the price, we keep on changing the price, 400. If we change the price to 400, what's our profit? If I change the price to 200, what's our profit? Do you get, we're just changing the price. I'm gonna hide this one, we're not using this. Let's just hide the row. So, so this is a typical model. So we're saying, okay, at different prices, at different prices and at different costs, so this is our cost, Let's I think the cost is going up too much. So let's say our cost starts at uh, maybe 400 in the middle. Let's just say 400 in the middle. That's our cost. And so you now type all the different costs you want to analyze. Let's say it goes up by just, uh, let's say 400 here. And let's say it goes up by maybe 20, just plus 20, right? Just to make it a bit more realistic. And then here we're saying the cost is going to go down by 20. That's yeah? so just to be a bit more realistic.
So you build this table up. This is like your sensitivity table. For our price, let's say 500, and let's say the price only goes up by, uh, I don't know, 30, right? Price. This is the price for food. And then here we say the price goes down by 30, minus 30. Okay. So this is our table. You type out all the prices you want to analyze. You type out all the costs you want to analyze. And what we want to see in here is our profit, right? Inside here. I want to see at this particular price and this particular cost, what's my profit? So let's check this cell. This cell is at this price of 380 and this, this price of 500 and this cost of 380. Let's check. At price of, price of what? 500. Let's say price at price of 500 and cost of 380. You see that our profit is 7,040, right? So if I come here, price of at cost of uh, 500 and 380. So this 500, this is 380. Uh, the, the answer is 7,040. Now, what about at a price of uh, 400, at the cost of 400? At a cost of 400, the profit is three, four. So it's like you have to copy and paste like 100 times. So at a price of 500 and a cost of 400, price of 500 and a cost of 400 is our profit. So you keep on changing this, changing this. This is like scenario, scenario. That's inefficient. What we want is the system to automatically populate it. And the way to do that is you type the analysis of price you want to check. Type the different assumptions of cost you want to check. And then at the corner here, you link that corner to your profit. See? This corner, you link it to your profit and you say enter. So it's in there. You can't see it because we just uh, made it disappear, but it's, it's there. It's there. So we just kind of formatted it as white or something. You come here. You, go, you really don't need to see that. So we made it white. You can't see it. Then once you type, once you link the output to the corner, you highlight like this. I notice this row here has our price and this column here has our cost. Once you highlight, you go to data, you go to um, what if analysis, data table. Then under your row input cell, it's saying, okay, this is the row that has price. You come up to your model and say price. Where's price? Price. And then for the column inputs, which is in the table, this column input in the table, you come to your model and you select cost. So what you're telling the system is come and change this automatically 100 times and give me all the answers down here. So when you click OK, you see that the answers come up. Answers have come up, perfectly come up. So see the answers. And what we can do is we could format these answers using our normal number format, thousand separator, negative values, so that we can see those places where we made a loss. And you can see that this company is not profitable. If you if you have if you have a price of 470, you better have cost that is less than 380 or less. So this is a sensitivity. And if you remember, can you remember this too? This is what we did manually. These two up down here. You know, we we did that manually, and you would have had to do that uh, so many times manually. But you can see that the system has calculated everything automatically using a sensitivity table. So this is a sensitivity table giving us all the scenarios at once. And so that is really how to use scenario and sensitivity analysis in a model. If you're doing a Monte Carlo simulation and you're using sensitivity for the Monte Carlo simulation, you won't be able to do another sensitivity. So you would have to use the old school way, which is not just typing, typing the inputs manually, not doing a normal distribution. So that's generally where we are. I don't know how did we get all of that. It seemed like a mouthful. So what did we ha will happen is how many of you want the actual exercise so you can practice it yourself? So you can watch the video and go step by step by step and practice it yourself. Because in the one hour, I've kind of crammed in a lot. How many of you want that? If you want that, send me in the chat so that I can get that for you and uh, we note your request. Because what's going to happen is on our website, you'll see you'll see this very soon on our website. Um, if I go to a video blog on our website, you'll be able to see it. Let me show you that. So if I come to our website uh, here, normally you would go to our website, dbrownconsulting.net, type webinars, you'll be able to see it. But if you want resources, you go to resources and you go to a section of our website called uh, video blog on our website. 
this is where we're going to have, we're going to host this video when it's ready. So if you go to video blog on our website, where is video blog? So it's coming up now, video blog. You will see this video will be stored on onto video blog and then you'll be able to watch the video. And in that video blog, you see a link to download the exercises so you can actually watch the video and, and learn how to do this yourself from scratch. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. And so let me have your comments. I hope you enjoyed it. And we will be doing this again next month. We do this every month. Our webinars are every month, third Thursday of every single month. And I hope you enjoyed it. But you have a small poll to answer again for me. Let me just put that up before we go. So you can see our video blog coming up on the screen. Let me quickly get you a poll. One last poll, one last poll before we go. I just want to know how many of you, before this course, how many of you use scenarios, uh, scenarios when performing your financial analysis? So these are the this is the history of all our webinars. So you can go there to our, our resource page. And if you go to the video blog page, which I thought this was, you'll be able to see a list of our blog posts. So 50-50, some of you have used scenarios in your analysis. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So thank you very much, guys, and I hope you enjoyed this, and we'll see you next month. Same time next month, third Thursday of the month, we'll talk about some other topic. So remember to register, share the links with your friends, and I'll see you guys next month.